standing up in McKinney. This is According to Callus. It is episode 696, coming to you on September the 25th, the year of our Lord, 2024. And today we're going to go off into something that, quite frankly, I am not an expert on. And I am not going to be speaking to you as if I were an expert. I am, however, going to ask some questions and ask you to consider what I'm saying and then go search out subject matter experts and search out your own information, right? You, you need to make your own decisions here. I just, I'm hearing and seeing things that, uh, well, are disturbing perhaps, but just don't add up. In any case, before we get there, Before we spend any time talking about that, let me remind you that I need your help. I need you to do me a solid, follow, share, subscribe, ask for those notifications, whatever it is. Join me on the social media of your choice. Just a simple like is all it can take. But if you find me on the social medias, I am at Facebook. I have a page and group. I am a pro at Gab. I still drop in at MeWe, and for now, you can still find the program over at YouTuber. (laughs) All right. As I've said many, many times, you cannot care about politics, but politics cares about you. The idea that they're just never going to leave you alone, right? I mean, it is a a bit of a fantasy, if you will, that we could move to our 40 acres, get a mule and live independently and not have people messing with us. Now, perhaps that was a possibility over a hundred years ago. I don't think it's really been a reality since at least the seventies. And what I find particularly disappointing about this whole situation is the very same back the land hippies, their, their generations still running things and they just don't want to let people go. They, they don't want you to be free. They don't want you to have a thought of your own. They're just, and when I say they, I mean, those that are in power, those that are in control, those that run government, pull the levers of power. They cannot stand the notion that somebody might be doing something that they don't approve of, or that they don't want you to be able to do. So today we're going to talk about threat assess. Do we need to do an assessment of what the real threat is? I mean, because I will tell you, I've heard many, many times that, you know, I am the problem. People like me are the problem. And when they're not calling us Christian nationalists, they're calling us white Christian nationalists. (laughs) As if the white makes. Uh, Any case, I I guess it's just easier because then they confuse people as Aryans. Uh, Who follows any Aryan anything? But. Or, or even the, uh, what is it, Christian identity groups. I ain't got time for that, right? But this is the thing. They, they want to confuse people. They want to paint people into quarter. They want to push people to make us the enemy. They don't seem the least bit concerned about the communists, the progressives that are in charge, actually probably closer aligned to the communists than the rock-ribbed Christians in this country, right? Furthermore, uh, they have zero concern about all the Muslims they've imported who have a long track record of killing and subjugating those that oppose them or forcibly converting, take your choice. But they're not a concern us Christians are because clearly we are the bigger threat. So in light of that, right, if you consider the fact that our own government sees us as the threat, You have to reconsider just where is your alliance. So, you know, a long, long time ago, 1991, exactly, I gave an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And if I'm not willing to assess the distinct possibility that we have domestic enemies in charge. We have domestic enemies subverting our entire country, looking to put their boot even not, they're not content with it on our neck. No, no, no. They want to put it on your chest and then kick in the, well, you know, the nether regions and then put it back on your throat to choke you out while you're writhing in pain. 
I mean, it's just never enough. I mean, because clearly I'm the threat. You know, the guy with a full-time job, a wife with a job, two kids that they raised, we're clearly a threat to, to uh, undermining the entire country. Funny how that works. Not the millions of people that are coming here with a open arms and cash in their pocket courtesy of our leaders. They're not doing anything negative there. No, nothing to see here, good citizen. All is well. It's you people over there that have been here for your lives, that invested, some served. Uh, No, you're the threat. You're the problem. Yeah, I... It reminds me of the uh, phrase, and I know it's very dated now, so forgive me, but homie, don't play that, right? For those of you that were around for the uh, mid to late 90s Fox, you know exactly where that comes from. I got to say, I was around and awake when Randy Weaver's family was attacked, when the church in Waco was firebombed essentially. I I missed the uh, the move burned down. I think it was in Philadelphia. I, you know, I, I I observed what happened in Oklahoma City, but I only got to see on TV what they wanted me to see. It wasn't until I did some extra investigation that things don't add up. We all saw what happened in two thousand and one. But the same kind of stuff was tried in 1993. And while I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the questions that are obviously there, because then we would be delving into conspiracy stuff, and we can't have that, even though most of the world is run by conspiracies. (laughs) But honestly, honestly, it doesn't really matter how it happened. It did happen. And here we are, and the very same people that a good number of people like me ostensibly pledge to protect the Constitution that we all operate under, these people have tossed the Constitution. These people have inverted our entire system of government. They have inverted everything that we thought we were protecting, and we're the bad guys. We're the threat. So let me ask you, how many of you out there still think that the FBI overall is worth having how many of you believe the cia does more good than harm how many think the department of homeland security is a legitimate thing how many of you believe the batfe has a useful purpose still how many of you believe that the dea operates within its rules how many of you believe that OSHA is a net positive to our business people? How many of you believe the EPA is working properly? How many of you believe that the NSA should even exist? Well, I'm going to tell you that constitutionally, none of them should exist. Constitutionally, they're all in direct violation of the strict construction view of what the Constitution says and what it was allowed to do, what the states granted those authorities to the federal government to do. The general government had very strict limitations put upon them, and it was only until some judges, some guys in black robes, decided that they could you know, find other things and find other justifications. Now, I'll be the first to admit, in the middle of a war, things happen. A lot of things happen. Most of them are not good. And under the contingency of fighting a war, maybe you tolerate those. Maybe you accept them. But historically, after the war, those things go away. Or at least they fade into the background. They're not a continuous growth industry. I would submit to you that none of that happened after World War II. In fact, the forever war of the Cold War and now the war on terrorism has just brought us further and further down the road to the tyrannical surveillance state that we live in. It makes me wonder if the people that talk about the American Stasi are right. It makes me wonder if really all the freedom is just a myth. 
a story that the old tell the young, to quote somebody else. I submit to you that when I was a wee lad in 1974, I wasn't old enough to think at that point as a three-year-old, but things were afoot. There were crises with the monetary system. There were crises with the energy system. And we could have, should have fought our way through all of that. And yet they've reoccurringly returned to just damage, damage our country and our people further. And the people in charge don't seem the least bit interested in actually fixing the problem because that would take away their power. And I know many people around me, they just don't care. They want to pretend it doesn't matter. They want to just go to church and be pious and pretend that nothing is happening and nothing's going to hurt them. And if things get bad enough, well, God's just going to zap us out of here and we have nothing to worry about. What if you're wrong? What if, what if we don't escape all this? What, what if it's our job and our duty to stand for what's right and to push back and hold the line for that which is righteous or constitutional? What, what if we all missed something here? I want to say we all. I'm including myself. I mean, we saw what happened in 2020 and we did little to nothing. Now, I mean, I'm not looking to pat myself on the back, but I did a little more than most. Not as much as some. And certainly I'm not a hero. We saw those heroes, right? And a lot of them paid the price. And when I'm talking about 2020, I'm talking about a number of events that took place from mid-2020 all the way through into 2021, mid-2021. I'm not talking about one specific instance. I'm not talking about one special event. I'm talking about a series of things that went on. And those that were in power, those that had the responsibility to do the right thing, chose not to. In fact, in many ways, they told people to stand down. They told people to look the other way. They ter- told the people that were in a position to prevent a lot of what happened to just not get involved. So let me ask you, who's the bigger threat? Let me ask you, should we not consider the very same government or levels of government that consider people like me to be a threat? Should we not at least acknowledge that perhaps they are the threat, that they are the source of the problems? I mean, if you're sitting down to play a a game of cards and and you're playing against somebody that's cheating, that's telling you you lost when you clearly have a better hand, that when you go to take the pot, they put a gun to your head and said, no, that's ours, or, well, okay, fine, we're gonna let you keep 30% of it. I mean, who's in the wrong here? It doesn't seem like it's much of a stretch. But we, the people, we just keep enduring it. Our forefathers would have never tolerated what we tolerate right now. And we're doing it on the concept that we're just going to have peace for a little while longer. Or I'm content right now. Or I don't want to disrupt my comfort. I can take a little more, just a little more, a little more. At what point, at what point do you say no, enough is enough? At what point do they break you? Well, I don't know that answer. But if you're not willing to at least consider, consider that those people that inhabit Washington, D.C. or federal offices, they don't have yours or mine best interests when they take the actions that they take. And indeed, you can see some of this even at the state level, right? Right? Those state actors, oh, there was a whole lot of governors around this country that they just usurped powers, abused their power, locked people down, and quite frankly, punished the good, solid citizens of their state for daring to question what was going on. Apparently, the FBI, in their infinite wisdom, not, is far more concerned about some parents that show up to protest what the school district's doing or dare to question the status quo of their schedules that they put out they're a bigger threat than the millions of people that have fled across the border they're a bigger threat than the (laughs) hundreds of thousands potentially of venezuelan gang members or human traffickers or quite frankly muslim infiltrators and let's not even get into the communist chinese infiltrators and there's potentially 
Millions of them in this country. And they're not the least bit worried about them. At least not that we know about. Because they're hyper-focused on, well, you're a patriot. You're a problem. So let me ask you, who is the real threat? Now, I, as I say this, I know how it sounds. It sounds kind of crazy. And I want to be very clear. This is a cautionary tale. This is something for you to reflect upon. I'm not asking anybody to do anything foolish. I'm not asking anybody to go violate the law or bring about violence on anybody. No, that'd be a huge, huge mistake. But it is useful to at least know what time it is. It is useful to know what game we're playing. It's useful to know where we're at. And I submit to you that a large part of our population has no idea. They don't know what the time of day is. They don't know where they're at on the field. They don't know what's next. And at this point, I don't know that we can convince them of anything other than what they already believe. I think it's willful ignorance at this point. I mean, look, I wish, I wish I could go back to high school and just rid my brain of any interest of any political science stuff, any history stuff, any government stuff, just wipe it all out. There are times I do wish that. I mean, how much happier would I be if I just didn't care, if I didn't know, if I was unevolved or involved, excuse me, unaware. But then I think to myself, well, no, I have a responsibility here. As a good American citizen, as a Texian. I, I, I have a responsibility to look out for the next generation. I have a I have a duty based upon the oath that I took all the way back in 1991 that I'm going to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now, when you defend, there's different ways you can do that. Clearly, I'm not going to get into a fist fight with anybody because that's pointless. And I'm darn sure I'm not going to take up arms against something that I can't possibly beat. That's even more foolish. But I can protest. I can stand up right where I'm at and say no. I can push back. That's what I'm doing right here. Every day I make an episode, I'm pushing back. I'm trying to hold the line. And the most disappointing thing about this is I meet veterans that just don't care anymore. I meet law enforcement officers that they mean well. They do. I meet a lot of good ones, but I meet other ones that it's like, yeah, I'm just pushing the button here. I, I don't care. I mean, is it fair? I mean, that's my impression. Hopefully I'm wrong. You know what they say about a few bad apples, right? I mean, maybe that's what it is. And I can say that every interaction I've ever had in a professional situation with anybody in the local level has been extremely professional, extremely well done. And I have no gripes. But I have seen it. I have heard it. I mean, you can't watch YouTube without running across, you know, abusive stuff. Does it make it real? Does it make it always? Does it make it a problem? Well, yeah, it kind of is if it's not dealt with. It kind of is if it's shuffled over, papered over, and we just pretend it's not there. Then it becomes an issue, yes. But the real question is, if we accept that our biggest threat to liberty is ourselves. Because we tolerate what the government does in our name. We accept what government does in our name. We go along with government doing things in our name. So if we're going to be mad and we're going to be upset about what government's doing, we really need to take a good, hard look at ourselves in the mirror. Now, again, to be clear, don't do anything foolish. Don't do anything illegal. Don't do, don't resort to violence. There's just no reason for that. But now we still have an opportunity. We still have our right to strike out, use the First Amendment for all it's worth, and speak out for liberty, for truth, and for justice. Now, I know there's been some uh, 
radical changes to the idea of what justice is or what it means lately. The idea of equal weights and measures comes to mind, right? That's a nice biblical way of putting that. When you treat people the same, when you have the same punishment for bad behavior, when you have the same reward for good behavior, when everything's on an even playing field, if you will, that's justice. Is it perfect? No. But it's at least supposed to be, in theory, blind. It's not supposed to weight the scale. It's not supposed to hurt people that don't deserve to be hurt. But let me ask you, are you confident that's what's going on today? Do you think there's room for improvement? Do you think that we could do better? And how do we do better? Well, there's a number of different ways. I mean, you can go out and speak your mind. You can go out and advocate for, you know, better treatment, better actions, better elected officials. You can raise money, you can support, you can, you can do all those different things using the political system that exists, knowing full well that we are but a small piece of that, but that's what you can do and that's what's reasonable and that's what's right. But I heard the statistic, and again, I don't know entirely how accurate it is, but 16% of firearms owners vote. 40% whatever it was, of Christians show up and vote. Well, I don't know about you, but I think, myself, that your average Christian voter is probably better capable of coming up with a good answer on most questions that run our lives than the average pagan is, yet they don't seem to be interested in doing the job. They don't seem to be up to the task, and I have to ask myself, why is that? So where's the threat, right? I don't know. Again, if you go to the church and the pastor won't preach the truth and won't encourage you to do the right thing, that's kind of on you. You continue to elect the same people to office and they continue to ignore the Constitution. They continue to do whatever it is they want, regardless of what you, their supporters think. It's kind of on you. When you continue to allow the things that happen, that abuse power, usurp power that's not there some of that's on us so when we're talking about you know a threat assessment if you will the biggest threat to our liberty the biggest threat to our constitution is our own lack of action our own lack of concern our own lack of interest in my opinion so while i can appreciate Why somebody in D.C. might see me as a threat. I'm not at all related to anybody that would go take up arms. I'm not involved with anybody that wants to go, you know, take down a building. I have no hatred for my fellow man that has a different shade of skin tone than I do. I have zero desire to go eliminate people that bow east five times a day. But I'm also not going to pretend they're not there. I'm also not going to pretend that there's not an issue with that group. It's just the way it is. The old adage, don't bring none, there won't be none. True enough. I, I, I still labor under this idea, this notion that we can just get along. That we can tolerate a society where people believe different things and still function. Is it going to be perfect? No. Is it going to last long term? Uh, Maybe. But what we're doing right now, we're upending our entire society. We're tossing our very constitutional constraints and our government is becoming more tyrannical, more surveillance heavy, more abusive as the years go by. We do nothing Oh, we're going to show up and vote because, you know, every two years that makes a difference when you elect the same people and you get the same thing. (laughs) Again, what is the answer? What can you do? (sighs) This is where it gets interesting, right? Because it's different for everybody. I guess it's a tolerance level. How much time can you give up? How much money can you give up? 
How much risk are you willing to take? Are you willing to have people not like you because you have an unpopular view? Are you willing to have people hate you because you're wearing the wrong t-shirt? Are you willing to stand and face down people that hate something that happened a hundred and whatever years ago and none of, no one in their family was even around for it? Until you're willing to answer those questions. Until you're willing to address that situation, perhaps it'd be best if you just stayed home. Perhaps it would be best if you don't go vote for more lesser evil. Every action that we take has to be a chess move to push back and hold the line. Every action that we take has to be on the offense to protect what's important, which is behind us. So yeah, I imagine I am a threat, but not in the way that the feds may imagine it. I'm my own threat because I can't do enough. As a matter of fact, most of the time I feel like there's just not enough time in the day to do all that I think I could or should do. That's not a good feeling. But if you're honest, you can accept, well, you know what? I did what I could do for today and tomorrow will be there as well. That's all we got, folks. Take your stand where you can. Push back whenever possible. Possible, excuse me. And don't be afraid. Don't cower. My friend t- talks about staying uh, vigilant and never cowering in the fear. I'll echo that sentiment. If you're not willing to stand and face down your fears, if you're not willing to hold the line, then just stay home. Because you're not doing anybody any good. And you're certainly not setting an example worth following. And with that, this has been According to Callus. And I'd ask you, consider, what do you think the threat is? And with that, I will see you on the other side. For all your Texas fashion tees, it's TexianPride.com. Whether you're out honky-tonking in Austin, bucking Broncos in Fort Worth, or strolling the San Antonio Riverwalk, Texian Pride is here for you. Support a Texan-owned business and show off your love for Texas with style. Visit TexianPride.com for your next fashionable Texas tea.